Today I'm going to recap one of my favorite Crown episodes. It's from season two, it's episode eight, it's called Dear Mrs. Kennedy. The scene opens with two African Crown cranes just chilling in a hallway. Directly behind the cranes is a portrait of Queen Elizabeth. So we know that whatever country we're in has some kind of affiliation with the British Commonwealth. At the very same time, in the next room, the president of Ghana is giving a very impassioned speech to a group of African leaders, and he's saying that it's time to break away from Western influences. What the writers do in this show that's really helpful is whenever they give you a bunch of historical context, they try to illustrate that point. So they flash between this scene and the previous scene where they show workmen come in and remove the portrait of Queen Elizabeth, roll it down the hallway, and just like shove it in a closet somewhere. Bye-bye, Queen. We then transition from the bright golden hues of Africa to the gray dreariness of the British countryside, where we see our queen. Her companion says to her, It's definitely seen better days, ma'am. Now, is he talking about the British Commonwealth? I mean, based on the scene we just saw, we're not really sure. And then we realize it's another illustration by the writers. He's talking about an old oak tree. Oak trees are considered the majesty of the forest. So they're comparing the aging of an oak tree to the aging of the empire. A third person then comes in, and her companion says to the queen, you remember my grandson? To which the queen responds, yes, I was at his christening. Now the focus on the queen's age is reinforced as we see her painfully take off her boots and catch a glimpse of herself in the mirror. Now, Claire Foy does this thing really well, where she barely does anything with her face and you totally know what she's thinking. And right now she's thinking, Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. This then carries over into the beginning of the next scene, where we see Queen Elizabeth gazing out the window, bitching about getting older to her mom. <laughs> the show likes to make the royal family seem just like a regular old family. So at this point, they have Queen Elizabeth sit down on the couch and have macaroni and cheese for dinner with her mother while watching TV. It's like a TV dinner. So they watch the news, and on come the Kennedys. The Queen Mother in total mom mode just compares her daughter to Jackie and reinforces Elizabeth's insecurities with her age. So it's only been a couple scenes, and we already know the foundation from which this whole episode is going to be built on. The aging of the Commonwealth and the aging of our Queen. We then have a quick shot in Ghana where we see the President of Ghana shaking hands with a Soviet diplomat. So we know that whatever they were talking about in the first scene is already taking place. The Prime Minister then has a meeting with the Queen where he informs her of this. So it's just like, shit day in the office. The Prime Minister then brings up what a hit the presidential couple was in Paris. Apparently the President of France isn't the biggest fan of JFK, but he's a huge fan of Jackie. And Elizabeth's like, why? And then the Prime Minister says, she can speak French. <laughs> to which Elizabeth is like, well, we can all do that. I love Caddy Elizabeth. That happens a couple more times in this episode, so hang tight. Elizabeth then brings up the fact that the Kennedys are expected in London on their way back to the U.S. So now Elizabeth's insecurities with Jackie are going to be like front and center. So she now has to pick out a dress to wear. She tells the designer that she doesn't want to feel second best. <laughs> to which the designer kind of stupidly responds, Well, you are the more senior of the two. To which the queen's like, Now, now. He then reminds her that... This is a monarchy, and if you've got it, flaunt it. Elizabeth's like, oh yeah, I am queen. She picks a dress she likes, and that leads us into the next scene. Now, the dress she loves so much may be fit for a monarchy, but maybe not the monarch herself. So we have the dresser just shoving Elizabeth into the dress, and Philip is darting about the room, gushing about Jackie, even going so far as to rearranging the seating at dinner so he can sit next to her. The chaos continues into the next scene. The footmen all rush to the window, the guests all clamor to the balcony, the entryway, and Philip himself makes a beeline for the front of the room. Everybody wants a glimpse of the presidential couple, Jackie, entering. <laughs> the queen refers to this whole situation as mass hysteria, and I feel like her insecurities are like really coming through. The presidential couple then enters and the evening gets off to a bad start. They totally forget royal etiquette. They don't curtsy. They refer to Elizabeth and Philip by their wrong titles. The prime minister cringes. Elizabeth's assistant cringes. Philip just kind of laughs it off, and the president's like, mm. Jackie then takes off for dinner, and Elizabeth follows. 
So at dinner, Jackie and Philip are flirting across the table from Elizabeth, and she has to sit there the whole time and just watch. It's like, girl, we get it. Flames on the side of my face. After dinner, Philip then comes up to Elizabeth and gushes about how great Jackie is. And she also wants a tour of the palace. To which Elizabeth quickly cock blocks and says, I'll take her myself, thank you. It is my house. Another catty Elizabeth moment. Elizabeth then takes Jackie on a tour of the palace, but it's kind of more like a boring history lesson. She points out all the portraits of the dead people on the wall and how she's related to them. Jackie tries to make a more personal approach and talks more about herself, but they end up connecting over the fact that they both have attention-seeking husbands and queen-like sisters and how insecure they are in the spotlight. They then settle in the queen's private quarters where they feed the queen's corgis and just have girl talk. They're BFFs now. Elizabeth then meets with her sister at the stables later on. Now, Margaret's in like two minutes of this episode and she's 100% Margaret. This is why I love Margaret. Margaret talks about the place she just saw and Elizabeth has no idea what she's talking about. So Margaret goes on about how Elizabeth knows nothing about plays, galleries, art. Do you even read books? She ends it by calling her a savage. I'm a savage, yeah. Classy, bougie. Elizabeth then gushes about her new BFF Jackie, and Margaret takes this opportunity to uh, make another strike at her sister. She lets Elizabeth know that Jackie was overheard at a dinner party talking shit about her. But it was probably nothing. And then she just takes off, leaving a trail of cigarette smoke behind her. But Elizabeth needs to get to the bottom of this. So she meets with her childhood friend who happened to be at that party at the palace. And he reluctantly informs her that Jackie did have a few unpleasant things to say about her. Apparently, Jackie referred to Buckingham Palace as dilapidated and the provincial hotel. She referred to Elizabeth as incurious and unintelligent. And she even went so far as to insinuate that this was the reason why she isn't surprised by Britain's reduced state in the world. Now, what's interesting about this whole scenario is that the writers actually proved Jackie was kind of right. You go back to that scene at the beginning of the episode and you have the Queen Mother just banging on the TV set trying to get it to work. I mean, it's kind of like a dilapidated hotel. And then you have that whole scene between Margaret and Elizabeth where she calls her a savage and she points out that she never sees plays, reads books, do anything, and Elizabeth doesn't even seem to care. And then this whole episode is also about the fact that all these African countries kind of want to leave the Commonwealth. So Jackie was kind of right. Of course, the scene ends with Elizabeth being Elizabeth, and she's like, we must have her again sometime. So a telegram shows up from Ghana, and apparently they are probably going to go through with this business deal with the Soviets instead of the Americans, which would lead this African nation farther away from Western influences. So Elizabeth and the Prime Minister are like, ah, shit, what do we do? And Elizabeth, probably being stirred on by what Jackie had said about her, is like, you know what? I'll go. And the Prime Minister's like, no, 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 no. This is way too provocative. This isn't what a monarch does. This is too political. So on the plane ride over, Philip is reading all these newspaper articles, essentially reiterating what the Prime Minister had said. Philip himself is like, dude, this isn't your job. You should just be where you're supposed to be. And Elizabeth is tired of being a puppet, she says, and they continue on. So they show up to the presidential palace and crowds gather and everybody cheers and cameras flash and a band plays God Save the Queen. The president of Ghana swoops in, gets his picture with her and takes off. And Elizabeth is like, did my plan work? But then she gets back to the royal quarters and the prime minister calls and says, no, things didn't really go as planned. The president of Ghana is going to go through with business with the Soviets. Turns out she is a puppet. This shock continues into the next scene where it shows her getting ready for the dinner she's about to have with the president of Ghana who just betrayed her. She has her sash and her crown and it makes me think of the portrait from the beginning but in the beginning, she was all majestic and queen-like. And here she's just like insecure. It's like the behind the scenes Elizabeth. So at dinner, Elizabeth is sitting there and she's thinking, what do I do? She has an idea. She sends a secret message through her assistant to the president of Ghana. He then crosses the room back to her and says to her quietly, 
you do understand how the importance of this moment. To which she responds, yes, but do you understand the terms of the agreement? He takes her hand and they dance the foxtrot, implying that the deal went through. With this one dance move, Elizabeth was able to reclaim Britain's influence in the world, as well as reclaim her own confidence. We then go to the presidential couple where JFK is giving a speech at a state dinner and Jackie's just chilling next to him, like hating the limelight like she said she does. It flashes to a scene where JFK is getting his photo taken with a bunch of girls and he's like feeling up their backs with Jackie looking on from far away, just totally jealous. Kind of having the same moment Elizabeth had at dinner earlier where Jackie had been flirting with Philip. Jackie and JFK are back in their hotel room, and this is where the writers really took the opportunity to let the audience know what they think of JFK and Jackie. And they kind of make JFK just seem like a jerk, like a really bad husband. He shoves it in Jackie's face that Elizabeth found out all the gossip Jackie had said about her, and it's essentially because of this that Elizabeth went to Ghana after all. So Jackie's trash talking did benefit everybody, but at the expense of Jackie's reputation. Jackie then reminds JFK that she actually has to swing back through London on her way home for a private luncheon, to which JFK refers to the whole situation as a cat fight and says he looks forward to a full report. So then we have Elizabeth flying home from Ghana. She's totally happy, really proud of herself, confidence restored. The Prime Minister reads the papers to her, which boosts her up even more, and then he reminds her that Jackie's going to swing back through London on her way home, and she would like a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with Elizabeth prior to the luncheon. So Elizabeth knows that Jackie knows that Elizabeth knows that Jackie talks shit about her. <sighs> Elizabeth is like, fine, I'll meet with her, but let's make it at Windsor Castle. Sometimes only a fortress will do. So Elizabeth is ready for battle. The next scene, we have Jackie pulling up to Windsor Castle. She's totally freaked out. She almost gets run over by the Queen's guards. And you got Queen Elizabeth looking on from the window. Now, I've seen this episode a couple times, like a lot. And every time I see it, I always think maybe Elizabeth just like released her guards right when Jackie was pulling up. I don't know if it happened, but it's fun to pretend. So then we have Jackie walking through Windsor Castle, and it's totally dark, there's guards everywhere, she just looks so small walking up the stairs, and you even hear a death chime in the background. When she finally gets to Elizabeth, she remembers to curtsy, she even calls her Her Majesty, and Elizabeth invites her to sit. Jackie immediately launches into apology or explanation while Elizabeth just sits there buttering the crap out of a scone being like, yeah, girl, I thought we were having a good time. And then Jackie goes into why she had said everything she said. Apparently her doctors prescribe her medications that pep her up and calm her down. And between the medications, the booze, and the arguments with her husband, she was just a hot mess at dinner. Elizabeth then goes into this very endearing monologue about how the only reason she even went to Ghana in the first place was because she felt insecure around Jackie. But the funny thing is that she doesn't even say this out loud. It's all this inner monologue that carries over into the next scene where you realize it's actually a conversation she's having with Philip. Jackie really would have benefited from hearing about this. And I think Elizabeth knew because Philip then goes on to say, no, you did the right thing. Three cheers to that and goes to bed. And Elizabeth is just like, this is yet another behind the scenes Queen Elizabeth moment where you get to see Elizabeth as just Elizabeth. So next we're back out in the Scottish Highlands and you got that huge oak tree just lying in the middle of the path. Apparently the oak tree fell down, but the Commonwealth stayed. We know this because the country of Ghana is still today, as of whatever date you see down below, part of the British Commonwealth. And Elizabeth's behind the seat of her Land Rover. She's trying to pull it out of the way. And a guy drives up and he gets out and he says to her, ma'am, we need you back at the house. And immediately, anytime this happens in the series, like they come and fetch her in the woods, something went down. So Elizabeth goes back to the house and is like, the house, the palace, the castle, I don't know. And she goes back and she's walking in and she overhears on the radio, JFK has been shot. She's like, oh shit. So the next couple of scenes show her pouncing about the house, listening to the radio, sitting on the couch back in that drawing room. And then she crawls into bed, lies next to her husband and whispers to him, he's dead. 
She then hugs her husband. So now we're back in the drawing room, the same drawing room that Elizabeth was in with her queen mother at the beginning of the episode. Although that time they were gushing about Jackie. And this time they're making comments about how Jackie has blood on her dress and why couldn't they get her a new dress? And Elizabeth, recognizing that this is a clear and articulate move by a fellow introvert, says it was probably deliberate. She then gets up, goes to her assistant's office, and tells him that she wants uh, the royal household to observe a full week of court mourning. She then tells him that she wants the bell rung at Westminster Abbey. He tells her that, ma'am, this is usually a custom reserved for the death of a member of the royal family, but this time it's Elizabeth's chance to break royal etiquette. And she does it for a friend. She then goes into her office, sits down at her desk, takes out a piece of paper and a pen, and starts writing a letter. Dear Mrs. Kennedy, blackout. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.